You know, we get people that get on nerves, that tell us off. Nasty people at petrol stations. Nasty, you know, the KL Highway is a wonderful place to practice. Wonderful. <laughs> Fabulous. Do you know that I was coming out of um, center point around that area, and uh, I got cut off really badly, you know? And I almost rammed into the person. He cut me off so bad. I beeped him. Oh, boy, big mistake. It was a van full of people. I, I don't know. They were skinny, they were hard, they had uh, very nasty tattoos, and uh, let's just put it this way, I, I had some karma to purify seriously. They chased me all the way from Banda Utama here, center point, all the way to Mid Valley. Do you know how, they, we were on the highway, and I was going like, I, I was Mario Andretti, and I was chanting and driving, and, and my car <laughs> cannot do these kind of things, it's not a sports car, okay, and I tell you, I was like, oh my God, and they were, I was weaving through the traffic trying to get away from them, because they came so close to me. They came so close, and a couple of times I ran on the brakes just a little bit. They stop, so they come to the side and they try to cut me off. And I'm, like, I'm, I'm just weaving through. And you know how I lost them? Yes, my dharma protector showed up and went nee 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 nee, blew at them and they disappeared. No no no. <laughs> I mean that's what you expect from a, a lama from from Tibet, right? The dharma protectors come and save him. The golden child, lights, doves, whatever. <laughs> that didn't happen. Nobody showed up. You know what happened? Uh, Federal Highway toll. Okay, I got to the toll just before Mid Valley, and I had a touch and go. Thank God I can touch and go. Oh. <laughs> and those guys didn't have a touch and go, and uh, I tell you, they had to pay. So when I touched and went, I speeded all the way, and then they lost me. And and I saw them trying to pay and hurry up. You know, I saw them, and boy, did I learn my lesson. Number one, take refuge in a touch and go car. <laughs> take refuge. It was, it, was, it, it was really serious. I, I said, oh my God. From then on, I kept my touch and go cart. Always, never. That's one. Second thing is, on the KL highways, never ever beep at them unless you look inside and it's a 120-year-old granny. <laughs> or you look inside, it's some little, it's some little um, 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 uh, uh, dingbat teenager, you know, chewing bubble gum and they can care less. Or you can see their car um, is 120 years old. You never beep. But then again, if they're like that, there's no point. Then, you know, why beep at them? You may give them a cardiac arrest. Yeah. And then there was another time on the highway when I was driving, and there was this young, very pretty, yet very attractive girl, you know, fit. I don't know, she's 25 or something. She was in a sports car. She'd go really fast. Oh, she was so nasty. She kept cutting me off. And she cut, kept cutting me off, and then I beeped her. So when I beeped her, she went, she went in front of me, and she kept stepping on the brake. And I was like, oh, my God. I said, what a fabulous place to practice. So I was watching the road, and I was, 99% uh, I was watching the road, and 1% I was watching my mind. And I thought, oh, I, I really got pissed off, and I said, oh, forget it. I said, I beep what? I'm impatient what? You know, I don't know her situation. I don't know, maybe she had a nasty day. Maybe she just broke up with her boyfriend. Maybe she, she's had some unhappiness today, and, and I added to it. So if I was a little patient and not beeped her, then she wouldn't be doing this to me, and we wouldn't almost have an accident. And she looked like the type that she had plenty of money, so she smashed up the car, never mind. Me, it's going to be back to Bukit Bintang with my bowl and giving strings out <laughs> to get a new car. The new phenomenon, Bukit Bintang, the monks stand there. I don't know if they're monks, you know, with begging bowls, you know, for money, no, no shoes, Saturday nights, giving strings. I think, hmm. Anyway, so I was really careful because I didn't want to smash up my, my little car, you know, my only car. And then, uh, anyways, it's a great place for practice. So on the roads, we don't challenge, we don't fight, and we let them pass, we let them win, let them go. Let them go. What they want, just let them go. You know why? Because ultimately, we both lose. And I was thinking, what a great place to practice. And I'm very patient on the road now. I don't beep anyone. I'm not, it's not that I'm afraid they're going to get me. I don't beep anyone. Because I thought about it deeper. It's my impatience. It is my impatience. It is my anger. It is my projections to how they should and should not drive. And when people cut me off, when they don't give signals, whatever. I think, what am I complaining about? KL, you should drive in New York. They'll drive on top of you. Oh, yes, and you go on the highways in L.A. Oh, it's major scary time. And um, anyways, that, I don't do that. I don't do that. So I, I don't beep anyone anymore, and I don't challenge anyone anymore, because I realize it's my mind. It's my mind. And uh, when I drive, I let everybody pass me. If they want to beep, they want to do, just let them pass. They beep, I just smile, that's it. And you know what? Since then, no more incidences. No more. I don't get people chasing me across town. I don't get people going in front of me and stepping on their brakes. And I almost ram into them. And it's, it doesn't happen anymore. 
In fact, I've become a really, really nice driver. And that, that I'm very happy because it may seem like something small, but it's an aspect of my mind that I expect people to be like that, like that, like that. They don't, I challenge them. And that's a wrong challenge, violent challenging, hostile. And here, when you beat people, it's very offensive. And that's the culture here. So since I live here, I've got to understand the culture here. In America, it's not a big deal. In India, they tell you to blow the horn. If you're going to pass somebody, you've got to blow the horn. Because I lived there for years. So everybody's beeping everybody. Nobody gets upset. That's the culture there. You let them know you're passing them. So um, you see on the back of trucks, lorries, everywhere, it says, blow horn, blow horn, horn please, everywhere. Imagine if a Malaysian went there. Just think of Jivan going there, you know. Blow horn. <laughs> blow horn. He knows what happens if he blows horn here. <laughs> you see Jivan in Chera somewhere with a bunch of young, punky little kids, and he beeps out, then that's it. 